So it goes without saying that we all want to grow our orchids as best as possible, given the circumstances we have available to us, be it indoors as houseplants or in a designated orchid room, with more climate control, including specific grow tents, all the way to having a climate-controlled greenhouse as a possibility. Some of us depend on Mother Nature to hopefully be ideal for our orchids growing in the landscape or in form of a hybrid indoor-outdoor growing environment. It matters not how well we believe to have things dialed in when it comes to orchids. Spots can appear for a multitude of reasons, which I did a deep dive video for, and that is linked in the description. In this video, however, I'm going to focus mainly on the spotting that we see on dendrobium leaves. I have singled this genus out because it is well known that dendrobiums object to anything product-wise that touches their leaves by rapid leaf drop. There's a limited arsenal that we can use on dendrobiums to counteract spots, infections, or fungi without risking losing the leaves at the same time as we are trying to deal with the unsightly and sometimes concerning spreading of spots. Now, there are several homemade DIY remedies that are effective to a degree when applied on a regular basis at the right time. They work as a preventative, and if you have such a DIY concoction that works well for you and your dendrobiums, please leave your tips in the comments for others to benefit from in case they do not want to do what I have been doing in the past. Also, if you are going to mention systemic products that have worked well for you on dendrobiums in the past, then please also state which country or territory you are in. Not all countries have the same products, so it would be really helpful if you could add that detail into the comments without sharing too much of your personal information and Thank you so much for that in advance. Because I have several dendrobiums that have shown black spots on their leaves in the past, even though I have not had water left on their leaves, which is one culprit of getting black spots, water on the leaves, because it activates bacteria or fungal spores on the leaves, leaving spots behind, which even when treated will eventually cause the leaves to go yellow and drop off. Once you have some form of bacteria or fungi on a leaf, the spread is almost guaranteed, even with intervention. Black spots can also manifest themselves because of cultivation imbalances. If the humidity is too high or far too low, too high or too low temperatures, or inadequate air circulation as well, too much air circulation because that will cause the cell structures of the leaves to break down as well. The combination of too low humidity and warm wind, even if it's just a breeze, is one of the main factors in my dry climate here in southern Spain, which makes black spots occur on some dendrobiums. Not all, thankfully. But weirdly, my hibiki had this problem arise in early spring of 2023, and so did my Patricia van Pruyenbroek. They had been growing clean all these years, and then they weren't. I tried my trusted garlic alcohol concoction focusing on the new growths, which I could paint with the mixture so as not to have the fine droplets on the leaves, and while the new growths started growing clean, the older spots would not stop spreading. So I resorted to something radical that I do recommend if all else fails, and that is to remove all the leaves with excessive spotting on them before they turn yellow and fall off because they have declined. Get them off prematurely. Because if this was a fungal issue, then I am protecting the new structures while treating the remaining structures with my DIY mix to avoid the new structures getting the affliction before they have a chance to mature. I do sometimes leave a leaf or two on the orchid if it only has a single spot, just to see if the spread continues or if I was successful in making it stop. Now I have to add, and this is important, I have to add that as we remove green leaves with the spotting on them, we are also removing the ability of the orchid to photosynthesize while the leaf is still green. This can weaken the plant over time and we need to be mindful of what decision we want to make, as in leave the affected leaves on the orchid and wait for it to fall off prematurely which it will, or intervene and take away the ability for the orchid to photosynthesize sooner than she would be able to if we left the leaf on. Personally, while the latter is the hardest intervention, I much prefer it 
because with that I'm giving new growth the best chance for growing clean again. Always with the realization that my orchid may be set back for a season, but at least I am stopping the spread, which can affect new growths with the tender new leaves and them getting hit soon, prior to the cuticle even having a chance to harden off. So that is what I did with both my Hibiki and Patricia Dendrobiums, with the exception of some leaves that had a single spot on them, just to monitor it, and I also cut some spots off the tip of a leaf, leaving the still healthy part alone, giving me another opportunity to monitor if that leaf would be affected further down the line. It wasn't so. While I'm not an advocate for cutting into healthy tissue to get rid of spots in this instance, I made an exception because I wanted to keep an eye on the behavior of the leaf and possible continuation or spreading of the spots. Now I have to circle back to the humidity for a moment with my hibiki. I noticed the spots appear early spring 2023 as previously mentioned and they appeared because of too high humidity in combination with cold temperatures seeing as I left these two orchids outside even while temperatures drop to 12 degrees at night which the hibiki can handle if she is a strong orchid. Well it did not occur to me that in 2022 I divided this orchid into two pieces which is also a stress factor that could possibly have played a part in my hibiki not being as strong as I had assumed to be and thus not being able to cope with the low temperatures and high humidity resulting in spotting. My Patricia, still a mystery to me but I'm going to conclude that she just does not like my dry climate and I have tried to find a place for her on the patio where she is not exposed to too much of the dry warm wind and that would be on a shelf underneath a table right by the head of the deep south. It kind of worked, but you can see that the spotting is coming back on the growth that grew well after I took all the spotted leaves off in 2023. And besides, I do not want this orchid touching anything else with those spots. And if she were in the blooming alley, I have too many dendrobiums there that could possibly be candidates for the same issue, and that is too risky. Still, she grows new growths, which are clean, but resorts to spotting after a while. The same with my Kingianum, by the way. So I shall just keep monitoring these two orchids without being fussed about either of them. I'm glad to say, however, that my Hibiki is growing clean again. That is a relief because this orchid does mean a lot to me. Since January 2024 and when these orchids come into active growth, I have been focusing mainly on calcium nitrate and CalMag. I am working towards tough growths as opposed to big growths. Well, it would appear that my Dendrobium kingianum has the same issues, but when it comes to the size of the new growths, it has other things in mind, and I love the added size jump to the previous year, and if that is what we can expect from the Hibiki and the Patricia, then we're winning. Maybe not against reoccurring spots, because my climate doesn't change to accommodate their needs, but we can work towards stronger and more resilient growths in the long run, in the hopes that maybe with our fertilizer and supplementing regime, we can counteract the spots despite the climatic conditions. The takeaway from this video is, know that there is such a fine balance between the right humidity, temperature and airflow when it comes to growing orchids in general, and to strive to grow orchids that have no blemishes at all, is of course what we all want to do. But if you see spotting on your dendrobiums, check your temperature, your humidity and airflow, and know that it is not always something that is going to take your orchid out, or spread to other orchids, or else I would have been in trouble a long time ago. Fungal infections can be treated with many DIY concoctions, we just have to be on top of them, and in most cases, the black spots are merely attempts of a fungi spore trying to make its rounds, which we can treat, again, as long as we stay on top of it with these DIY homemade remedies. Bacterial infections would be identified by the spots being somewhat soft and wet, and they do spread much faster than the fungal spots, and in the case of a bacterial infection, taking the whole leaf off is, in my opinion, the best course of action, and then, once again, stay on top of preventative treatments to ensure any bacteria left behind doesn't stand a chance. So if I had a choice, <laughs> I would rather not have to make that decision or have to choose. I would prefer to have these fungal spottings as opposed to bacterial. But either way, 
At some point when it comes to the Dendrobium genus, if nothing else works, removing the leaves is the best course of action. And then support any new coming growths with a lot of calcium, CalMag, and a regular fertilizing regime. On top of that, as per, when it comes to helping an orchid recover, I advocate for eliminating any unnecessary energy consumption which stops the orchid's recovery or potentially delays it and which can also tax the orchid because the hormones are not as active if an orchid is in bloom. The next growth cycle cannot be initiated sooner while the orchid is in bloom or the energy of the orchid is directed to the blooms and the new growths growing at the same time are not getting the energy attention they should. So in the case of my Hibiki, the blooms and the buds are all coming off. Because I want her to focus on the new growth, she is already starting to push and are well underway. The beauty for us when it comes to Hibiki is she blooms for a very long time, but that can be a problem for the orchid because her energy focus is on the blooms throughout her lengthy blooming period. So removing the blooms will help the orchid direct her energy to the new growth, which will produce new leaves, new roots, and as a result of all of that, the orchid will benefit resulting in growing strong again. That is what we need to do in cultivation if we see spotting on dendrobiums that we are not comfortable with, that spreads, that takes out leaves, even though it goes against our nature to do some of the radical intervention I suggested in this video, at the end of the day, it is what is best for the orchid in the long run. That is something we always need to keep in mind. And one more thing, finding what works takes time. This video and the observations from what I did to be able to speak on this subject has been in the making since early spring of 2023. After trying DIY tinctures or removing leaves to protect new growths and now removing buds and blooms, that would be a total of 16 months. So please do not think that anything I have suggested here is a quick fix. Instead, I hope that this was helpful to you from the onset if you were to notice spotting on your dens that you are not comfortable with, that it gives you some pointers which you can implement straight away without having to wait and wonder and be in doubt about and just then merely hope that what you are doing is the right thing. Before I end this topic though, I would so appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, which helps out tremendously, especially on videos like these because the topic is unpleasant. It is scary for me as an orchid lover because you never know the outcome. And I appreciate the mental support your support provides. So thank you very much also for watching. I wish you a fabulous day on the condition though, please that you stay safe. Take care, bye.